This is Lesson 4.7, Congruence Transformations. Your objectives are to identify congruence transformations and to verify congruence transformations. Whenever a shape or some type of figure flips over or slides over or turns around, it's called a transformation. Since the size and shape do not change in those cases, it's called a congruence transformation. If it flips over, it's called a reflection. If it just slides, then it's called a translation. And if it turns around, it's a rotation. Identify the type of congruence transformation shown as a reflection, translation, or rotation. Number one, this figure just flipped over from the top to the bottom. When it flips over, that's called a reflection. Number two, this figure just slides down to the right. Each part of it slides down to the right. The size and shape do not change. When it slides like that, it's called a translation. Number three, this triangle rolls around. It's turning. The size and shape still don't change, but it is turning around. That's a rotation. For number four, this figure, when it moves over, it turns around. And when it turns around, that's a rotation. Any time it turns around, in this case clockwise, it's a rotation. Number five, depending on the way you look at this, you might get your answer different. Do you see this as a shift where the figure is just sliding to the right? Well, in that case, it would be a translation. Or do you see this as flipping over, where it flips over from left to right? In that case, it would be a reflection. So depending on the way you see it, it could be a reflection or a translation. Both answers are correct. Number six. This is flipping from the top to the bottom. It's a mirror image. That's a reflection. So remember, any time it flips over, making a mirror image of itself, that's a reflection. If it's just sliding over, that's a translation. And if it's turning around, then that's a rotation. Whenever you make a transformation, you can verify that it is a congruence transformation. To verify that, you need to make sure that each of the shapes is the same shape and same size. That's when you verify a congruence transformation. For question one here, we need to identify the type of transformation and then verify that it's a congruence transformation. Well, the first triangle is ABC and the second triangle is DEF. That just flips over, making a mirror image of itself. So it's a reflection. Now, to verify that it's a congruence transformation, I can show that these triangles are congruent. And the way to do that is using the side-side-side postulate. If I can show that the three pairs of sides are all congruent, then I can show that the triangles are congruent. So let's start by finding the distance on each of the sides. If it's a horizontal or vertical side, 
You can just count the distance. But if it's a diagonal, remember to use the distance formula. Segment AB on the left, that's horizontal. And that has a length of 2. That corresponds with segment ED on the right. That one's also horizontal, and we can count that, and it's also two. That's one pair of congruent sides. Segment CB on the left, that's a vertical. We can count it. That's three. That matches segment EF on the other one. And that segment is also vertical with a length of three. So far we have two pairs of congruent sides. For the third pair, those are diagonals, so we're going to have to use the distance formula. For segment AC on the left, we'll use the coordinates of points A and C and put it in the distance formula. The square root of x2 minus x1, which is negative 1 minus negative 3, plus y2 minus y1, which is 4 minus 1. Square each of those, add them, and then square root them. Negative 1 minus negative 3 is 2. Squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. Squared is 9. So we get the square root of 13. That matches segment DF. So we use points D and F and do the distance formula there. The square root, the quantity, x2 minus x1 squared, that's a 1 minus 3 squared, plus the quantity y2 minus y1, that's a 4 minus 1 squared. 1 minus 3 is negative 2, squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3, squared is 9. And that's also the square root of 13. So all three pairs of sides were congruent, which means we have side, side, side. So the triangles are congruent. This was a congruence transformation. To do a congruence transformation verification, do the distance formula for any diagonal sides. And remember, you can just count the distance on a horizontal or vertical side. Once you have shown that all three pairs of sides are the same, then you're finished. So remember, to identify the type of transformation, if it's just sliding over, that's a translation. If it's turning around, it's a rotation. And if it's flipping over, making a mirror image of itself, then it's a reflection. To verify that it's a congruence transformation, remember to find the length of each side. For a horizontal or vertical side, you can just count the distance. But if it's a diagonal, remember to do the distance formula. Once you've shown that all the side pairs are congruent, then you're done.